this race, his legend will increase. No warm up, no nothing. To drag another bike out of the trailer for one shot for the trophy. And going up against Dean Johnson, who absolutely, positively has the bad Suzuki here this weekend. He has reset the track record a couple of times for the trophy in Pro Stock Motorcycle. These two have raced in the final four times. Back one for you. You remember the one Steve won? How about Indy, where they reversed the call the week after the race? That's the only time Dean Johnson has ever beaten Matt Smith in a final round. joined in the media center by our Pro Stock Motorcycle winner following the old Spring Nationals here at Houston Raceway Park. Picking up his first win of the season, first win at Houston, 10th of his career in dominant fashion, setting both ends of the track record, Mr. Steve Johnson. Steve got the victory in the final round over our tribal nemesis, Matt Smith, who broke out a different motorcycle in the final round, which was kind of interesting. Steve got there by taking down Eddie Craywick, Jimmy Underdahl in the first round. It was L.E. Tonglet, fan favorite. Uh, excuse me, it was Michael Ray uh, who fell victim to Steve Johnson. Steve, just a huge performance for you. Same weekend, you got your first 200 mile per hour run, just uh, a laundry list of accomplishments. Tell me about your weekend. Well, it all starts back at the shop. It's uh, typically with everybody, they, they work. Uh, Matt has set the Matt Smith, who we raced in the final, he has a, a land, kind of landscape, uh, our racing society with this professional hobbyist and I just keep working it because it's it's so many people will so many people uh, more than 10 will say and send emails about I'm I'm uh, I'm a hobbyist but I'm passionate I'm so I really feel uh, I feel a, a job to be able to let everybody know that no matter how you do it when you come to a drag race watching racing working on the motorcycle selling hamburgers i mean it's we're a family and, and we we all love it in our own way so i think about that when i'm in the shop we have a 10,000 square foot shop and my engine room is is 12 by by 10 maybe and i spend 95 percent of my time in that little tiny room putting the engines together so it's um it's a huge accomplishment to sleep at the shop on on a blow-up mattress not go home it's a it's a huge accomplishment to spend I didn't give I didn't give all my bonus money to my crew. <laughs> I spent it on parts, but uh, they're um, uh, knowing that I'm, I'm buying parts and knowing that I'm putting the engines together and knowing that I have all these great vendors. It's really really exciting to see it come out here on the track and watch it go. You know, it's it's fun, and then it's like all the mouthing and all the talking, chit chat, social media stuff. You know, some people say just let the scoreboards do the talking. So I, you know, I, I, I like the chit chat, but I, I do like the scoreboards talking too. Let's open it up to members of the media for Steve Johnson name and affiliation, please. First, Josh Hatchett from NHRA. Steve, obviously you found something big today, or even I guess yesterday you made the, the good run in, in the heat. Did you feel like it was going to be able to perform like that in, in the heat? That seemed pretty impressive to put up those kind of numbers in, in weather like this. Yeah, it was, you know, Gainesville, we're all just kicking ourselves in the butt because we didn't, we didn't run good in Gainesville. We, we weren't ready, and, and we went there for two days. NHRA had a test session, and we, and we fought. The first day of the test session, I worked on the bike. Second day of the test session, the, the engine didn't, uh, the transmission didn't work right. So uh, we really felt like we had a good bike in, in Gainesville, but we just we couldn't show it. And, and it, was, it was really, really, um, uh, whatever the, uh, really, really is such a great word for, or two great words for drag racers. But, it was um, it was a it was a huge setback for our team and sponsors because we had all winter to work on our motorcycle and then to go out to Gainesville and the flop and in that weather you're, you're just probably not going to see that kind of weather anymore. But, uh, to come here, um, I think uh, um, with the whole NASCAR theme that we have, I'm kind of buddies with a handful of them and then Tony even 
it's pretty cool. You know, Tony comes up and blah blah blah. I know Gene Haas and but the, the Wallaces, all, all these name name drop and stuff. But Kurt Busch says, he says, man, the best thing in the world is to win early in the season because that carries you through the whole season, even if you flop. If you can win right away, man, you're, you're all you're all good. So it's um it's nice to be able to win early. We've we've won in Gainesville before. But this race is so special to me because this is where I got my first sponsor. Um, I think it's just, Slick 50 was a, an engine treatment. They invented the category. It protects your engine under startup. All the oil's in the pan when you, when you start your car. So uh, they got involved with NHRA because they saw so many do-it-yourselfers. And I was beating on at the SEMA show. And so I said, you need to come to the races and see your, your, mark, your, your customers. And so I bought them all top of them. They gave me windbreakers and some stickers and a, and a couple of hats and 28 bucks or something like that. And, and I spent 350 bucks on top eliminator tickets for them. And I'm like, because Bernstein was my hero and Perdome, and I'm like, I'm gonna do the right thing and I, this is my career and I, this is the right thing to do. And I bought them all tickets and top eliminator and none of, <laughs> none of them came until I was 89. And it was like, oh my gosh, what a bummer. So um, uh, then, then, it was, then it became the Slate 50 Nationals so it really made a progression. Then the whole the whole company came here, and we took our Slick 50 motorcycle at downtown at the Hyatt, and we put it in an elevator, took it to the 28th floor, and did the press conference there. So we were all in. I mean, this town is so resilient because it's it's got all this oil issue, and and you know oil's good, and oil's bad, blah blah blah. But it's like they've been through uh, the, the the hail, and the hail destroying all the cars in, 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 through Houston. And all the things that they've gone through. My buddy ran the, the Baytown Fort right here in this, and he didn't make it through COVID, and it, it breaks my heart because he he always he says I know who you are, and he gave me money, and it's like that that was just we have so many stories like that where people. By the way, I they say why'd you win or how'd you win or I what you're most excited about. I'm most excited about the ten thousand dollars we get from any trade, but the um, the money really helps grow because now at this level. <laughs> We, we uh, burn up carts. Chris McGay, the, uh, most of the Pro Stock car guys, 50 runs, the valves go in the trash, 150 bucks for a valve. We have 16 valves now. So after a certain amount of runs, you've got to chuck those things. And the springs, we, we came up with our own springs. And this is the first race ever for us running a monster that we didn't have to change valve springs on Saturday night. Our, our own valve springs that we made that nobody else had, I actually, I sold a few sets. We got to run them, and they and they work. They work. So uh, really, really proud of that. Um, and uh, I, I um, and I also came here with Slick Fifty with my thirty foot box on the back of a on the back of an eighty one Chevy truck, all painted yellow. I had a carpet that was all red and yellow and striped with the black around there. It said Slick Fifty. It's like a showpiece. Put the bike on it. And, and, and I didn't qualify. <laughs> it sucked so bad. So a lot of a lot of big time racers came to me, and I this is where I learned how to do Walmart's. This is where I learned how to try to emphasize the value on the racetrack back at the retail. And I did. This is where I started doing Walmart's, and I did it with John Force. John Force would roll in. I mean, who would ever expect John Force to do Walmart's in this day and age, right? Well, he did. I mean, he had a different oil deal on there, but. He did them, and I was right there. I'm like, wow, this is John. Well, I'm, I'm Steve John. You know, so blah, blah, blah. But a lot, of, a lot of memories, and it's really, really neat to be able to have a, uh, boy, I went off on your. <laughs> Speaking of John Force. <laughs> this is Mike Cage with Race Day San Antonio. You were out on the track this morning walking around with your helmet on. What, what were you doing, and did, did, and did that help you get the win today? It really did. I, I uh, uh, a lot of people, a lot of sports stars, if you guys uh, cover sports stars, I, I would bet that if you had one word to talk about, one word that, that all sports stars talk about at one time in an interview, you would, I would think it would be a fundamental. Fundamentals, a lot of people always talk about fundamentals, and, and I've gotten away from my fundamentals. And Larry Dixon taught me about fundamentals and, and uh, the Frank Holly Drag Racing School with, with Frank and, and George Bryce constantly about fundamentals. Jeff Perella is a buddy of mine and, and uh, fundamentals. So uh, being able to pretend like I'm coming out of the water and, and picking my target at the other end. Our front wheel's in the air when it, when it leaves the line. So the rear tire is now the front wheel. So however you have the, front, the rear wheel in the chassis is where the motorcycle's gonna go. 
So if you're aiming, uh, if it's going to go over this way, the only chance you have is to know where you want to go and to push on the foot peg. That's how you steer a pro stock motorcycle when the front wheel's in the air. Handlebars don't do anything. So I went through that fundamental of staging, pre-stage, stage, and then popping the clutch and then going right to my target with my eyeballs. And then I was running down the track looking at where I wanted to shift because sometimes the shift light, we don't see it, and I pick a spot on the track. So that's, uh, it, was, it was, to answer your question, it was practicing my fundamentals and I, I, need, as many, I need as much practice as possible. Hey, what's up, Steve? Yeah. Uh, Darren Williams, competitionplus.com. Um, can you talk about the young man you had on your team working with you this weekend? Oh. And how excited he was about you know seeing you get this win. Your, this I weekend. love that you asked that. So um, we're a little team, and I'm stressed all the time trying to get stuff done. Well, our sport is so cool because it 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 really has open doors to anybody. And this kid wanted to uh, drag race. He wants to he wants to be part of NHRA. So his. Uh, he came and saw me at the last time we were here, I guess it was in 2020 or something, and him and his dad said, hey, you know, if we ever had a chance, could he, could he come hang out, JJ? Uh, and, and so I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know how many times we get all these questions and all this stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I always say, but unlike a trade show where you say, where they say, yeah, 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 we'll give you a sponsor, and then they don't give it to you, uh, the guy called me, and I, I, I got his answering, his, uh, went to voicemail, I listened, I called him back, he says, man, I can't believe you called me back. <coughs> You know, okay, so I told him to come to the race. So this kid is, uh, he's, he's 18, um, but uh, uh, he, he started, he worked on a bike, he was putting stickers on, he, he cleaned oil pans, I had him uh, uh, changing uh, computer settings. He's never been involved in any team much less at a national event, much less actually working on it. So he not only got to work on the bike, he got to be in the winter circle. So, and his dad's just on the moon, they live kind of far away. So I just love that opportunity. And, and, and because you've given me the mic, and I know you want to take it away, but it's like, it's, like, it's like if you want to do something for anybody, don't do it whole half-heartedly. Go all in, you know, I don't have kids, so it's like go all in, and that's, that's what I said in the interview down there, besides a trash and bat, that was funny. Uh, but I, I, it's, like, it's like, give him every opportunity so when he leaves, nobody else could have gave him the same opportunity that we had, at least at that level. And he's on the moon, and I'm really, really proud of it. So thank you, thank you. JJ uh, Daniels, JJ Daniels, I think is his last name. So you're, gonna, you're probably gonna see him. Lee Craft, Monday Morning Racer. Steve, congratulations. I just want to know how much broccoli have you ate lately? <laughs> <laughs> I eat you know, over a pound a pound a day. I have not had it here. I've had Lone Star and uh, and the uh, oh no, I had broccoli at both. I got double broccoli and 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 at uh, Outback. So I had Outback twice, double broccoli, and the other place double broccoli. So um, to answer your question, uh, every every day out of thirty days in a month, I might miss it two days. Steve, congratulations on your win, huge victory, 10th dominant fashion, 200 miles per hour, and uh, more to come. Thank you very much for spending time with us. Should, should I go into anything about my mom or just uh, like uh, a lizard? I caught a lizard once as a young young kid. Right? Should I do anything like that? Did you like connect with the lizard? No. Okay, well, then, no. Thank you, Steve. Congratulations. Thank you all so much. Thank you.